Writing in Plain English, Screencast 3. In this screencast, we're continuing our discussion about simplifying sentence structures. So in our last session, uh, we discussed as basic principles, omitting unnecessary words, keeping average sentence length short, 20 words or less to maximize readability, and breaking sentences up into shorter ones. People simply lose concentration past 70 words, and really anything past 13 words is becoming increasingly difficult to read. If you're drafting something in Microsoft Word, you can use the word count function to check your sentence length. So why not do that as much as possible? OK, so the principle I want to focus on next is shorter sentences. So let's consider something typically loyally. In considering the law applicable to judicial review, one must always bear in mind the propriety of unelected officials who lack expertise in the administration of finite resources substituting their own view of the merits of a particular claim for that of more experienced, in a practical sense, administrative decision makers. It's a 52 word sentence. If I'm speaking it, if I'm reading it aloud, I can only just get through it uh, with enough breath. Does it have to be that long? Can we get across the same meaning breaking it up into simpler pieces? Well, obviously we can. Here's one way we might do it. Judges must be cautious in judicial review cases. They are not elected and have no experience in administrative decision making. In particular, they have no experience of making decisions that involve allocating limited government funds. Judges should not, therefore, simply substitute their own views or preferences for those of decision makers. We could probably make it even simpler than that, but it's not one sentence, it's actually four. There are even some repetitions here, but it's 49 words, it's three words shorter. If this was an essay, we've actually shaved something off our word count and we've made our point much more clearly. So what are the four points we're making here? Judges need to be cautious. They need to be cautious because they aren't elected, so that might raise questions about their legitimacy. And they lack a particular type of experience. They lack the experience of government officials who have to allocate funds in real cases. And for all of those reasons, they shouldn't just substitute their own views or preferences for those of decision makers. So it's the administrative law principle that in judicial review, you can get review of the process, not the merits. Let's go back. Are all those four ideas present here in this 52 words? Well, we've got the idea of judicial review. We've got this idea of propriety and unelected officials. We've got finite resources, the concept of substituting views, and the idea that particular government decision makers will have more relevant experience. So the same four ideas are here, but they're in a muddle. They're buried in loyally language and spread across far too many sentences. And here we have the simpler version again. OK, so shorter sentences. Wherever you can, break things up. Make it shorter, make it simpler, make it clearer. So how do you do that? It's all very well for me to put up these two slides, but what are the tips and tricks you can apply to spot situations where you should be able to break things up and shorten them, or make them clearer. Well, let's go back to the guiding principles I was talking about. The next three guiding principles I want to talk about are these. Use strong, precise verbs. Minimize the use of is, as, was, and were. In many cases where you use is, as, was, and were, particularly with another verb, you're using too many words. You're creating extra work for yourself and for the reader. Turn ion or shun words into verbs whenever you can. And we'll see some practical examples. And finally, simplify wordy phrases. And a key one here is look out for the word of. If you're using the word of, ask yourself, do you really need to? OK, minimize as, was, and were. So first off, Typical lawyer language, Jones is in agreement with Smith. Well, that's the same thing as saying Jones agrees with Smith. 
So we've used is plus a noun, agreement, to substitute for a simpler verb, agrees. Similarly, another thing that you might find in a typical lawyer's letter, the professional fees in this project are entirely dependent upon the planning techniques that the client is in favour of implementing, which boils down to the project fees depend on the planning techniques the client favours. So in several of the cases there where we have is, as, was, were uh, forms of the verb to be, we've managed to pull those out and replace them with a strong, precise verb in terms of our general guiding principles. Okay, so let's consider my next point, turning ion ending, shun ending words into verbs. So the realisation of human rights requires, we could replace that with realising human rights requires. The implementation of the European Directive involves implementing the European Directive involves. The parties will, in continu will continue in negotiations until the parties will continue negotiating, and so on. So in each of these cases, we see a shun ending word, an ion ending noun. There is very often a simpler, more direct verb available. Last principle I want to talk about, simplifying wordy phrases. So of, overuse of the word of is often a giveaway that something has gone wrong. Jenkins had knowledge of the location of the printer ink. Jenkins knew where the printer ink was. The judge avoided the mistake of confusing principles of restitution and of bailment. The judge did not confuse restitution and bailment. So those uses of of, and you'll probably find you're using of a lot in any sentence running past 20, 30, 40 words, are often a signal that there is a simpler possibility out there that you could be applying. So what we've discussed in this, our third screencast, is using strong, precise verbs instead of is, as, was, and were in combination with some other noun, turning shun words into verbs, and simplifying wordy phrases by watching out for of in particular. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you'll tune into Screencast 4.